Well, we are really blessed today. I am so blessed that I don't just have a, a wife that sits back and encourages me, but is willing to step up with me from time to time. Doesn't want to do it too often, but she's going to come up and share the word this morning. And I just want to encourage those out here and maybe even watch it online. If there's something in your heart or something in your head or, or something you were brought up with that says women shouldn't preach, I want to tell you you're in the right house because God wants to get rid of that from you today. <laughs> because we believe, come on, in the beginning was the word. This is John 1. You can turn it to your Bible if you want. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the Bible. If you drop down to verse 14, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who do you think carried that Word for nine months? Come on, it was a woman. I love my, the, the apostle over the Bible college that we attended. He, he says, man, all this doctrine and teaching about women not preaching. He can't carry the word. What do you think Mary was doing for nine months? That's what he would say. He'd, he'd say it real deep like that. So he was, she, he, she was carrying the word. What do you think she delivered at the end of that pregnancy? She delivered the word. Who raised the word? Who fed the word? Who encouraged the word? Who spoke to the word? Who strengthened the word? Who was it at that wedding day to push Jesus to do his first miracle? Come on, woman, it's not my time. What am I to do with you? Mom, standing there, even telling Jesus. Jesus even had a mom pushing him, encouraging him, strengthening him. And even when after Jesus said his peace, she said, turn to the servants, says, just do what he tells you to do and leaves. Ain't going to listen to his mouth any longer. <laughs> Jesus had that kind of mom. And I was so thankful for the word. Amen. And uh, she's got a, a good word that she was uh, sharing with me and we worked on a little bit together. But I'm excited to, to hear it preached and hear it taught today. So I want you to uh, welcome her as she comes. We're going to do a little opening together. And really, open your hearts, get your notepad out, your iPad, and get ready to take some notes. It's a story you've heard before, but I believe there's some new things God wants to bring out in it today. So you can turn your opening text. Go ahead. Okay, so the opening, opening scripture for today is Isaiah 54.10. So, for the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my should my covenant of peace be removed says the lord who has mercy on you so my title for this morning is faith love and covenant Amen. so let's just pray before we open so lord we just thank you for today and we just thank you for this word and I ask you just anoint it and bring it forth the way only you can do in the way that you want it done open our hearts and our ears that we may receive what you want us to receive in jesus name amen amen well faith love and covenant is the sermon title today and this is the story that we're going to get into on ruth and naomi i mean you've read the book of ruth it's a great book to read through it's not that big so you can tackle it in a day and read through it and really get what god has, has uh, got for you in there and uh, it's a great, great story. But as we were talking about the story, and she was kind of relaying some of the points to me, um, how many like Hallmark movies? Some hands, loud and proud, go up. Some, I think, are a little more subtle. Uh, my wife loves Hallmark movies. Most of them. Most of them. Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a few you got to shop. But most of them, she's got a shirt that says, this is my Hallmark shirt. This is my Hallmark movie watching shirt. She's got a blanket. Somebody got her. This is my Hallmark movie watching shirt. Around Christmas time, it's nonstop Christmas movies, Hallmark movies. And uh, so as she, we're relating this story, now a little spoiler alert, if you've never heard this story, sorry. Um, but in this story, this is a lot like a Hallmark movie. The story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz and it's a story of redemption. It's a story of heartache. It's a story of romance. So we wrote down just a couple things. Like a Hallmark movie, the guy she starts out with in the beginning is not the guy she ends up with. Sorry for the spoiler alert, but something happens in the life of these characters. Um, there's sadness. There's some death. There's a budding romance. Uh, they return to their small hometown. Okay, sorry, spoiler alert again. Every Hallmark movie, they start out in a big city, some metropolis somewhere, and next thing you know, they're going back to that small town, and they bump into somebody 
that they knew from the past. Or, and it, it's exactly like that in this. So what were some of the other ones did you have? Do you want to say any of them? Or, uh, it ends, yep, spoiler alert, it ends with a beautiful family. And there's a wedding. And it's just so funny. Uh, there's a happy ending. But this is so much more than a Hallmark movie today. It's, it's silly, but there's such a comparison. I think that's why my wife likes the story so much. But this is a message for our life today. Our life today. Your life today. And not just for the women in the room, but there's something for the guys to, to remember and learn from this. So listen as we go through faith, love, and covenant. And I absolutely love this subtitle that goes with it next. Take it, honey. So faith, love, and covenant, and the subtitle is the faith of a mother, the love of a daughter, and the covenant of a father. So as he already pointed out, we're going to be reading out of Ruth today. The story of Naomi and Ruth is a great love story about a mother and daughter that teaches us about the faithfulness of God and that sometimes we go through things before we see where we're being led. It's easy to get distracted or feel like God has left us but the word says in Hebrews 13, 5, that he will never leave us or forsake us. So just a short little recap on chapter 1, like the first part of it. Um, Naomi's with her husband, Elimelech. And I just like saying the word Elimelech, the name. It's just fun to me. So, um, but they, they left Bethlehem, their hometown, because there was a famine. So they settled in Moab. And after some time had passed, they'd had a couple sons, and then Elimelech passes away. Um, so then that leaves Naomi and her two sons. The sons marry, then the sons die. So we're going to begin reading in, if you have your Bible, you can open it, or your phone, or your iPad, or whatever device you have. Um, in Ruth 1, uh, verse 6 through 22, and where we pick up in this, Ruth is talking to her two daughter-in-laws. So then she arose with her daughter-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited his people by giving them bread. Therefore, she went out from the place where she was and her two daughter-in-laws with her. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two two daughter-in-laws, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest in the house of her husband. So she kissed them, and they lifted their voices and wept. And they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go. For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them until they are grown? Would you restrain yourself from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you leave, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem, and it happened when they came to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the, at the barley harvest. So here we see that Naomi has all that she, she can take. She's had to leave her country. Her husband dies. Then years later, her son dies. Now she decides to go back to Bethlehem because she's heard the famine is over. She goes to leave and tells Ruth and Orpah, don't come with me. 
But she loved them so much that in um, chapter 1, verse 13, she says, It grieves me very much for your sakes that the land of the Lord has gone against me. Orba returns, but Ruth tells her, I'm not going with you whether you like it or not. But I'm going with you whether you like it or not. The only way you can get rid of me is if I die. And even then, I'm going to be right next to you. So, so you see, somewhere along the way, Naomi's faith, the faith of the mother, was passed on to Ruth. Something in her changed, and she didn't want the old ways. And, and as I was just reading that passage, um, just kind of s- stuck out to me. Uh, where did it go? So in verse 15, it says, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. So she turned back. She didn't get the faith that Naomi had. But then Ruth said, as your God is my God. So something has changed, changed in her. So she knew there was more for her. And at some point in our lives, we have to lay claim to our own faith, not ride on somebody else's. But still in this, Naomi is struggling. Even though she had that faith, there's a struggle there. When she returns to Bethlehem, the women are excited. She's back. But then she tells him, no, no, don't call me Naomi, because Naomi actually means pleasant one. And she says, no, call me Mara. I am bitter. God's left me. I don't have anything anymore. Naomi feels lost and adrift and hopeless. There's nothing to be done for me. God's left me. He's taken all that is precious to me. How can anything, how can there be anything else? She left her homeland because of the famine, but she returned with a famine inside of her. Definition of famine is scarcity of food, death, a general want of provision, sufficient for the inhabitants of a country of a besieged place, or want or destitution. This is Naomi. Naomi was in a place surrounded by death where she was deprived. She was in want. She felt besieged or taken captive. There was nothing left. She needed hope. She knew where to go when things weren't going well, when life looked bleak and everything was falling down around her. She ran home. This is what we should do. When it looks like everything is against us and we have nothing left to give, run home to the Father. He's waiting for us. This is where faith carries us. Hopelessness is the enemy of faith. But when we follow faith to lead us, to fight for us, faith wins every time. We don't even have to have a lot of faith. The word says just have faith as a mustard seed. It, it may be small, but there is strength in it. It is this faith that endures. When we find that faith, hope will follow. There's a story about a little boy playing Little League. And I'm sorry, I can't get off of that. It's just, you know, he coaches. It's just built in me. I just do the sport thing. I'm a sports mom. <laughs> so, and I enjoy it. <laughs> so... Not like I'm being drug and I have to. I really like going. In fact, I found myself yelling at Seth the other night, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I've become that mom. So um, it, it wasn't really yelling. It was more of an encouragement, <laughs> direction. <laughs> um, so he is in the in. So, so this little boy, he was in the outfield when his dad arrived late. Through the fence, the dad asked, what's the score? 18-0, um, says the little boy. We're losing. Trying to offer comfort, the dad said, I'm sorry, son. But with the hope of only a little boy, a little eager, could have, he answers back, don't worry, dad, we haven't been up to bat yet. (laughs) So the world needs hope, and hope comes through faith. Billy Graham said, the greatest need in the world today is the need for hope. When was a time in your life that you just felt like God just left you? We all have those moments. Maybe there's financial hardships or a bad doctor's report, a death, an argument. The list could go on and on. It not not always just takes one thing to make us feel this way, to feel lost or hopeless. But moment upon moment, it may take days, weeks, or years to, to find yourself in this place. But I know there have been times in my life when I just cried out to God, Why? Why do these things keep happening? I've already been through this, or isn't this enough? There have been times in my life, even recently, when I thought, enough is enough, I can't handle anymore. There have been times when I felt like I've taken two steps forward, 
to go 10 steps back, and it was very frustrating. It made me feel like I'd forgotten, like I was left. I struggled, but God is greater than all those things. Something that gave me peace was reminding myself that God already knows. He already knows the situations that we're going to be in. He already has a plan, and I just need to make it through, even if it's just one step after one step after one step. John 16, says, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. The key word here is in me. Peace isn't found in the world, in the things around you. Peace is found in Jesus. Attacks will come. Things won't always be sunshine and roses. But God declares, be happy, I've overcome the world. In other words, I already have in hand, and you win. Just trust me. James 1, 2 states, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Sometimes it's hard to find joy when we feel like everything is falling apart. This is the place where Naomi is. She had to leave her home, her husband dies, her sons die. Really, it wasn't enough that they had to leave their land and their families. Now, my husband dies, my sons die. Come on. This makes me think of Job. He lost everything, his kids, his house, his land, his livelihood. On top of that, his wife tells him, just curse God and already be done with it. <laughs> um, thanks for the support. <laughs> but through it all, through both accounts, God had a plan and purpose for their life, just like he has for us. They couldn't see it at the time, and neither can we, but his plan is so much greater. So he already had things in place to bring Naomi and Ruth through. When they returned to, Naomi, to Naomi's homeland, Ruth was able to glean in a field, and she found favor there. As it turns out, the owner of the field was none other than Boaz, and Boaz is a relative of Naomi. He took a liking to Ruth, and Ruth didn't shy away from him, especially when she found out that he was Naomi's relative. Boaz was their kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer in Hebrew tradition is a person who, as the nearest relative of another, is charged with the duty of restoring the rights of another and avenging the wrongs. In this case, Boaz goes and buys back the land that was Naomi's and marries Ruth. He is their redeemer. He restores their land and their right standing. This is a type of Christ. He is our kinsman redeemer. He returns all that the enemy has stolen and brings us a place of right standing with the Father. Boaz and Ruth go on to have a son, and they name him Obed. Obed is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David. And David is the lineage of Christ. Naomi wanted to give up. She thought God was against her, and she became bitter. She had a hard time seeing in fact, blessed, but through it all, God had a plan. Ruth has the love that Naomi needs to carry her through. That love encourages her faith, and hope is found. It took someone outside of the covenant to show Naomi that God hadn't left her. Ruth was a Moabite, and they came from Lot and his daughters. They were outsiders, strangers from a foreign land, not part of the covenant. God can and will use anyone from any situation if they're willing. So it doesn't matter what your background is or where you came from. That's in the past. Love God and move forward in him. There are times when we need others to lift us up and encourage us to get through. Ruth was loving when she lifted Naomi up. She didn't yell at her and tell her how wrong she was and just, just get over it. She loved her. And she had faith enough for both of them for a time. Gradually, that faith turned into hope, and Naomi was able to see that God truly had not left her. This is why family is so important. When one falls, we help the other one up. Here today, you're surrounded by family. Walk in love with one another, and when someone has lost hope, have enough faith to encourage them through the storm. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together, for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The scripture says that all things work together for good. All things mean the good and the bad. In John 16:33, we read that hardships, afflictions, and adversity will come. We are promised them. 
But we have a God that is bigger than all these things and stands in the gap for us. He will never leave us or forsake us. It would, be, it would have been easy for Naomi to remain in the state she was in, but she pushed through. She even pushed Ruth to seek Boaz. You don't have to remain in the state of bitterness and feeling left. Pray through it, seek others, and choose to be blessed. Ruth 4, 13 through 15 um, says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Be blessed. Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day, close, without a close relative. And may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be your restorer of life and nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has bore him. This is the covenant of the Father. He will not leave you. You may leave him, but when you return, he will provide. He will redeem. He will heal. He has a plan and a future for you. The faith of a mother, the love of a daughter, and the covenant of a father. All of us will be in each of these stages in our life. What stage are you in today? Do you need encouraged? Are you encouraging someone else? Or you, do you need to run home to the father? Amen. What a word. Let's give the Lord another clap offering for that word today. Amen. Come on, the simplicity of these stories in the Bible. Amen. It's not about Ruth. It's not about Naomi. It's about the Father. Even on Mother's Day, we're going to talk about the Father. But look at the importance of, her, of the mother's faith. You know, that when it was weak, it was strengthened because she passed it on. That we are to encourage and pass on our faith. And I, I just love so much about the stories that that uh, the faith of a mother, the love of a daughter, the covenant of the father. I, lo I love that she brought out how God will use anyone, no matter where you're from. A Moabitess wasn't really welcome in Judah. It really wasn't welcome. And God used her and grafted her into the lineage of Christ. That it, so much, so that God had a plan through the whole thing. And uh, I, I just love love so much of that that. Uh, just the strength that came back and passed on. That we, we are in those three stages that we need to pass on our faith. We need to encourage others' faith. And we need to be reminded of the covenant of faith. And I love that when they left, I love that she brought out that when they left, there was a, a famine in the land. But when she returned, the famine was in her. And she, even though she left, she found the covenant of the Father waiting for her. Not saying, well, you left when times got tough. I mean, you can really relate to our life. We, we leave God when times get tough, when things don't go our way. We leave and we look for a provision from another source. But when you come back, like that prodigal, it's funny how the same prodigal father is in the New Testament story and parable that we're finding the, the, the covenant of the father is right here in this story back in the Old Testament. That it's right there waiting for you with open arms to restore, to redeem, to give back, to return, to raise up, to bring a future, a plan, a hope. Man, this sounds like the same father. <laughs> sounds like the same God. It sounds like the same covenant that we are in today. So if you would, just stand with me and bow your heads in prayer. And we just want to pray for those maybe online or in the, in the room, whether you find yourself in either situation. Lord God, we thank you so much, God, for this word today, God. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Jen, God, and her willingness to bring the word today. And Lord, I ask you just to do with it, God, what only you can do, God. Bring, bring fruit, God. Let it be planted deep in our hearts, God. Lord, that we would learn from this word today, God. And Lord, we pray for those that may, may find themselves in that place where they seem like there's a famine inside of them, God. It seems like you've left us so much that we tell people to call us something else. That we're no longer blessed. That we're no longer fruitful. But we're hurting and we're barren and 
There's not seem to be much hope, God. Lord, but I pray for those right now, God, that you put a Ruth in their life, God, to come into, into next to them and speak to them and encourage them, God. Lord, I pray for Ruth to stand up in this church, God, in these families represented and come alongside someone that's down and, and not kick them while they're down and not kick them and say, you're right, you, you've, you've spent what God gave you and there's nothing more, but, but we would be like Ruth and bring encouragement, God, and speak love and speak peace and speak your word, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this story, God. I thank you for those in this place, God, that may find themselves in the need, like Naomi was, of faith, God, in the need of her faith be encouraged, God. And I thank you for the roots in this place, God, that you would use them to encourage others, God. Lord, and I thank you for the covenant of the Father that is there waiting for us, waiting for us to return, waiting for outsiders to come in. Lord, waiting for all that would call on the name of the Lord. No matter where they're from, what they've done, what they've said, what they've been, what their past might have been, what they've been might have been married to, God, that you are waiting for all to come to you. That the cross is open, the tomb is still empty, and your arms are still outreached. Your invitation is there. Lord, we ask you to call those home to you, Lord Jesus. Do whatever it takes, God. Bring the lost home in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Amen. And the church said, amen, amen. Well, we wish you all a great, big, happy Mother's Day. Um, do we have all the texts? All right, let's bring this up. If you're joining us online, we did a, a drawing for the moms. And we've got a flower hanging basket in the back. And let's see who's taking this home today. All right, and the winner is, all right, somebody's got to deliver it to Sister Joan. She's away. If you're watching online, you got a beautiful hanging basket coming your way. Also, every girl in the place, you can come up and grab a flower out of the vase here, or vase, however you say it. But there's a, a carnation here, and all the moms, make sure you come up and take one of the balloons. And please, take a photo with your mom, take a photo with a, another woman in the church, and uh, let's just get some, yeah, maybe not the married man. Oh, that did sound a little weird, huh? I took a photo with my mom this morning, so. Um, and uh, take a photo out there next, next to the photo booth. we got a couple signs you can take out with you and post online. And just tell everybody what God is doing in your life and how proud you are of your mom. And uh, be blessed today. You've been to service. Now go be the church in Jesus' name. Amen.